Good morning, viewers of Humanitarian Television. Thanks for joining us for this new edition of your program entitled Week Review. The first part of this program will do a recap of the news that ran throughout this week. For our guests, we are going to receive Honorable Joshua Osi, first Vice President of the Social Democratic Front. With him, we are going to talk of the Head of State President Paul Bia's message to the nation which has finally been delivered this 10th September, Tuesday, 10th September 2019. Next, we shall move on to our rubric entitled No Comments. We will come and put an end to this program. Before then, don't go far. We shall be right back just after this pause. We open this uh, program in uh, politics. The head of state, uh, President uh, Paul Bia, has addressed the nation uh, this uh, Tuesday, 10th of uh, September 2019, for about uh, 30 uh, minutes. The uh, president uh, focused uh, on the long lasting uh, crisis in the northwest and uh, southwest regions of the country. As a measure to solve this uh, problem, he announced uh, the national uh, dialogue which will be held before the end of this month. Moreover, during his speech to the nation, he called on members of armed groups to lay down their arms and benefit from the process of reintegration into the society. Another point he equally mentioned is the decentralization process, which is already put in place. He says the the head of state uh, thus uh, called on each uh, and every one uh, to join uh, hands uh, for the well-being uh, of our country, uh, Cameroon. We note that uh, President uh, Paul Bia's uh, message uh, has uh, been uh, highly welcomed uh, by the uh, Secretary uh, General of the United uh, Nations uh, in a tweet uh, published uh, some uh, few hours uh, after President uh, Bia's uh, address uh, to Cameroonians, the spokesperson of the Secretary General of the United uh, Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, expressed uh, satisfaction with uh, President uh, Bia's uh, dialogue process due to begin at the end of this month while reiterating the readiness of the United Nations to support the dialogue process Antonio Guterres further encourages all those involved in the peace including the diaspora to play their role effectively and participate in this peace effort. Still uh, concerning the president's uh, message, uh, some uh, political uh, men uh, here in uh, Cameroon uh, reacted uh, just after this uh, message uh, of the head of state uh, to the nation. Among uh, them, uh, the president of the Cameroon uh, of the Cameroon Party for National uh, Reconciliation, uh, Cabral uh, Libby, has uh, reacted uh, positively to uh, President Bia's uh, announcement of a national uh, dialogue look um, without uh, exclusion, uh, stating uh, the readiness uh, of the party to give uh, proposals uh, that could uh, help uh, end the crisis. Uh, Cabral Libby equally uh, concluded uh, by saying uh, his wish uh, is to see the resolutions uh, that will be adopted at the end of the national uh, dialogue uh, implemented. Um, apart from them, uh, some uh, church leaders uh, uh, also reacted uh, on this uh, among them, his uh, eminence, uh, Christian Cardinal uh, Tumi, has uh, expressed uh, satisfaction with the head of state's uh, decision to convene a national uh, dialogue. He equally stated uh, his uh, readiness uh, to help uh, in the peace-seeking uh, uh, process uh, uh, that will be led uh, by the Prime Minister, uh, Head of Government, uh, Dr. Chief uh, Joseph John Gute. He says, uh, I quote, uh, a group uh, that is the Anglo Phone General Conference has already analyzed a situation which will present to the Prime Minister who will preside over the great coming together, over the great come together, rather. We have a 400 written page document that relates the thoughts of many Anglophones. 
In the same vein, the Prime Minister, Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute, has convened a meeting this Wednesday in Yaoundé, this to brainstorm on the groundwork for pre-dialogue consultation ahead of the major national dialogue called up by the Head of State, Paul Bia. The meeting involved members of the government of the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Now, away from uh, politics uh, to talk uh, culture, uh, here in our country, uh, Cameroon, uh, the fourth uh, edition of the National uh, Artistic uh, and Cultural uh, Season of, the, of Cameroon, uh, abbreviated uh, RICAN, uh, has been uh, launched in uh, Yaoundé by the Prime Minister, Head of Government, Chief uh, Dr. Joseph Dion Goute. The event uh, considered a unifying uh, factor was a display of of culture and artistic displays of all 10 regions of Cameroon. In 23 disciplines, Cameroon's art, craft, and culture was put on display through a series of performances in music, dance, cinema, fashion, designing beauty, among others. The Minister of Art and Culture was speaking on this occasion. Let's have a view. Of this accept. Excellency, the Prime Minister, Head of Government, personal representative of the President of the Republic, Head of State, Your Excellency, the Ministers, fellow ambassadors, and representatives of diplomatic institutions, distinguished guests, all protocol due to respect. Ladies and gentlemen, the event that unites us today is a historical moment in the construction of the identity of the Cameroonian people. Indeed, since it launched, the national cultural and artistic relaunch has contributed in bringing together artists around projects of common interest, allowing for the magnification and celebration of harmonious living together, so much needed by our country in its work towards emergence. Today, the National Cultural and Artistic Relaunch is witnessing a major face lift, that of being held simultaneously in all the ten regions. Thus, in doing it with a true national character and reinforcing at the same time the base of arts and culture in the consolidation of social this uh, cultural and uh, artistic uh, uh, event uh, occurs in a moment when uh, the uh, country is uh, faced uh, with uh, some uh, socio-political uh, problems in some uh, regions uh, of uh, the uh, country. Uh, still on this uh, occasion, the Prime Minister, head of uh, government, uh, was uh, speaking uh, to the uh, people uh, present. Let's have a view of this excerpt. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this year's new national cultural and aesthetic season comes at a time when there is unrest of various kinds across the world. In the face of this uncertain situation, which persists, promoting the essential values of peace, tolerance, and togetherness appears to be one of the major challenges that humanity has to face. This indeed, a matter of loving our country above everything else, and being at the forefront of the struggle impelled by the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Bia, for the advent of a just, equal, and prosperous society. In the statement on the occasion of an official visit to the West province in 1992, which continues to be relevant today, the President of the Republic, Head of State, outlined the profile 
of our Republic in the following terms, and I quote, our common goal is to build Cameroon. We must all participate in building our national heritage. We must all fight everything that threatens our unity. End of quote. Opportunities such as these allow us to measure and better appreciate the crucial role that culture plays in the life and future of our nation. This is because culture is proving to be an effective remedy in all life situations. It establishes, inspires, and conditions and goals. We also know that uh, this event is uh, currently uh, going on at the Yaoundé uh, Museum. Uh, this uh, event organized uh, uh, under the theme uh, Culture, the Samantu Consolidation, National uh, Unity, Social uh, Cohesion, and the Harmonious uh, Living uh, Together aims at uh, promoting uh, our culture. Still talking about uh, the RICAN, uh, Cameroon uh, has a rich and uh, diverse uh, culture uh, made up of a mix of about 250 indigenous uh, uh, population and just uh, as many uh, languages uh, and uh, customs. Um, for about uh, three uh, weeks, uh, Cameroon's arts, uh, crafts uh, and uh, culture will be displayed at the Yaoundé Museum. This uh, cultural and artistic uh, event uh, will uh, gather artists uh, coming from the 10th uh, regions uh, of uh, the uh, country. Uh, let's have a view of uh, one of the uh, exhibitors. Uh, he was answering to the questions of uh, Star Bebe. Here yeah, is to promote the Cameroon culture. Here yeah, is to promote the Cameroon culture. We want to show what we have in Cameroon left by ancestors. You have, you, you have traditional costumes that you will discover tomorrow, made with banana and plantain leaves. You have the obom. You have soup, uh, cocoa leaves. For example, you can see this. You can see a, ch a chair in front of me. It's made with rejected wood from the forest. It's our African forest, the Cameroon forest. So we are we are out to bring out all. World the uh, Prime Minister, head of uh, government, uh, exalted the exhibitors uh, and the stakeholders uh, to be more than ever before ambassadors uh, of uh, peace and uh, living uh, together. He uh, acknowledged uh, the role uh, culture could play in the life and uh, future of uh, Cameroon uh, as such uh, called on men and uh, women uh, of uh, culture to uh, promote uh, the essential values of peace, tolerance and uh, togetherness uh, through their artistic uh, products. We turn the page of uh, Rican to talk of the fire uh, incident uh, that uh, occurred uh, last uh, Saturday at uh, Kalak uh, FM, uh, the hall of uh, Kalak uh, FM uh, radio uh, situated uh, at uh, Bastos uh, neighborhood uh, in uh, Yaoundé has been uh, reduced uh, to ashes uh, after fire broke out uh, in the night of uh, Saturday, uh, September 7 uh, to Sunday, uh, September 8, uh, according to report the fire broke out at about 1 a.m. at uh, Cuba Room a Snack Bar adjacent uh, Kalak FM uh, radio. Uh, due to the fury of the flames, uh, it extended uh, to the radio, raising everything apart from the transmitter. The director general uh, of this uh, radio says uh, the causes of the incident is uh, are not uh, yet uh, known. Uh, main uh, time, uh, the team are uh, doing uh, everything for the radio to start uh, uh, functioning uh, from, uh, for the benefit uh, of the uh, audience. Uh, let's have a view of this uh, except of one of the uh, audience of uh, Kellogg FM. Bad sentiment. Why? Because uh, it's my favorite uh, station that I always have my information from BBC and in the morning I will have my normal news in Cameroon. And then I have my favorite program that I was having, you see now. But my favorite program was BBC that was in the evening, that I have most information in Africa, everywhere in the world. You see now, that's why it worries me a lot. That I was surprised to see Kalak this morning, Monday, on fire. But I don't know if there's possibility, I would like you journalists to make 
Some Cameroonian uh, artists uh, like Cheno, Lidol, uh, Ulrich, uh, Takam, to name uh, these ones, uh, uh, trooped at the radio's uh, premises uh, to uh, manifest their sympathy to the radio uh, uh, promoter Kalak uh, FM, is an uh, urban uh, radio that was uh, founded uh, in uh, 2012 uh, by uh, his uh, leader Marcel uh, Amoko. On to other things, uh, still in this uh, week, uh, a press uh, conference has been uh, granted uh, by the Union uh, the Population Party this Thursday on the occasion of the commemoration of uh, he of uh, Om Nyobe, six, for, um, 61 uh, anniversary uh, of uh, his uh, death. Uh, this uh, celebration uh, comes at a moment uh, when the country is uh, facing uh, many uh, difficulties um, among uh, which the socio-political uh, crisis uh, in the northwest and southwest uh, regions of the uh, country. Let's have a view of the Secretary uh, General uh, of this uh, party. He was answering to the questions of Estelle Bibe. To recognize that those who died for our country died because they know, they knew very well that they are Cameroonian. They didn't think about their belonging to ethnic groups. They fought for the independence, the uni unity of this nation, just because they knew very well that they were Cameroonian. So in a context where some people are asking for the separation, are talking about some linguistic area, we are here to invite the entire nation to recognize everybody uh, has to recognize himself as member of this nation, not as someone belonging to an ethnic group. That's why we are very happy to know that in our celebration, in the context where we are celebrating the memory of those who fought for the independence and the unity of this nation, the head of state has decided to organize a dialogue in order to find solution concerning the crisis that we have now. The party calls on each and every one to fight for a quick return of peace and stability in our country, Cameroon. We move on to sport. The former Barcelona Inter Milan uh, Chelsea striker Samuel Eto has announced his uh, retirement uh, from uh, football uh, at the age of uh, 38. Uh, the Cameroon uh, forward, uh, who made his debut in uh, 1997, scored more than uh, 350 goals across his club uh, career, winning uh, the Champions League twice with uh, Barcelona and once uh, with uh, Inter Eto has also been named African Player of the Year four times. It also went on to claim gold at the 2000 Olympics as well as two Africa Cup of Nations titles in 2000 and 2002. We remain in spot by this time around to talk all that thing. The indomitable Lions of U23 have qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations uh, headed by uh, coach uh, Rigo Besson. This uh, competition is an opportunity for the under-23 uh, Lions uh, to uh, participate in the 2020 Olympic uh, Games, um, which will uh, take place in uh, Tokyo. Uh, both uh, Rigo Besson and the uh, players uh, expressed uh, great uh, satisfaction uh, for this uh, very uh, first uh, uh, victory. Uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, uh, we have come to the first part of the this uh, uh, program uh, which has just done a recap of the news that uh, ran uh, uh, throughout uh, this week. Uh, meantime, we are going to move on to the second part of this uh, program entitled The Guests. Once more, good morning, viewers of uh, Humanitarian uh, TV. Here we are in the second part of this uh, program entitled uh, The Guest for this uh, edition. We are going to talk about the long-awaited uh, message of the Head of State, uh, President uh, Paul Bia, uh, to uh, the uh, nation uh, which has finally uh, been uh, delivered uh, this uh, Tuesday, 10th September. 
2019 Honorable Joshua Osi, first Vice President of the Social Democratic Front and also Vice President at the Fika Food is here with me today. Good morning, uh, Mr. Joshua Osi, and thanks for honoring uh, this uh, rendezvous. As we earlier announced uh, in our headline uh, today, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Osi's uh, point of view about uh, the uh, President's uh, speech to the nation uh, that was being uh, delivered uh, this uh, Tuesday, uh, 10th September 2019. He is here with me today once more. Good morning. Well, good morning. And good morning to your uh, viewers. So, as a member of uh, your party and as a parliamentarian, uh, tell me, uh, uh, the president uh, addressed uh, uh, the uh, citizens uh, this uh, Tuesday of uh, September. Uh, we know fully well that uh, he focused on the anglophone uh, crisis that is ongoing for three years uh, now. Uh, as a measure to solve uh, this uh, problem, uh, he announced a national uh, dialogue uh, that has been uh, long awaited uh, by the uh, citizens. Uh, so, your point of view, tell me, is a national uh, a dialogue going to solve uh, this uh, crisis and also the choice uh, of the person that's going to lead uh, uh, this uh, dialogue. Who would like to know your point of view about that? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that um, if uh, Mr. Bia uh, was really serious about wanting to calm down the situation, he would have addressed the Cameroonian people in English since he was focused on that very problem. And I think uh, one of the the problems we have in this country is that uh, those ruling us have not really understood one, what it means uh, to be marginalized as the Anglophones say they are marginalized. So I think in his speeches it came out clearly that he doesn't understand the problem of Cameroonians and he doesn't understand the, the Anglophone, the situation of the Anglophones in Cameroon. And trying to pretend that uh, by having a Prime Minister coming from a former political entity, because it's not a tribe, um, uh, is tantamount to not being marginalized, means so that we simply haven't understood what the issue is. And it is a very dangerous argument because um, if you uh, go further to look at all the appointees, you will see that the geography of Cameroon is concentrated in one part of the country. And so I think um, it's rather unfortunate that we took uh, that approach. Uh, but then uh, coming to the dialogue, I think when dialogue um, is called up, and something we have called up for, uh, so we cannot be against uh, dialogue per se, uh, but um, you have to understand that when dialogue is called up for, um, it is called up uh, not with preconditions, and if there are preconditions, they have to be the preconditions of all the parties going to that dialogue. So now, um, as you rightfully say, that he has already decided on one part of the format that is who is going to lead the dialogue. Uh, we are looking forward to understand the other parts of that um, of the format, the conditions, the modalities, and especially uh, what will happen with the outcome of the dialogue. If uh, what will happen will simply be a decree by Mr. Bia, then I think we'll be very far from what the SDF is looking at. If uh, the outcome of that dialogue will be to review the constitution and put in place amendments that will supersede or will be above um, the parliament in Congress uh, and that Congress uh, cannot change thereafter uh, because you know that uh, the CPDM has an OB's majority in Congress today. Uh, then uh, I think it will be a very interesting thing, but nevertheless the SDF is going to do everything possible to make sure that the conditions and the outcome of that uh, dialogue that he is finally concealed to hold uh, will be such that it can bring peace in Cameroon, but we will not participate at any cost, we will participate if the conditions are right. Mm -hmm. Coming back on uh, who is going uh, to lead uh, this uh, dialogue, uh, do you think uh, uh, Chief uh, Joseph John Goudet is the right uh, person to lead uh, this uh, upcoming dialogue? Well, I think Cameroonians are already lucky that uh, the president single-handedly chose an anglophone. Yes. Um, uh, that's one point. Um, now, uh, if the president was really conscious of the gravity of the situation, 
I think you would have chosen a neutral anglophone and not somebody who stands for a political party or is part of his executive. But I think he wants to control the process. Yes. And that's why I say it's very important. It's not just um, who leads the process is one of the items. What is very important is to understand all the other items. So um, uh, we will not, on the basis of the chosen leader, uh, say because of that we cannot uh, participate in this dialogue. We, if we participate or not in this dialogue, it will be as a result of the entire package, of the entire modalities, not just one part. Equally, you talked about uh, marginalization. Uh, you said uh, the head of state uh, equally uh, ignored uh, the fact that uh, uh, most of the Anglophone uh, citizens have been uh, uh, marginalized. Uh, but I would like to know, uh, to he cited uh, uh, some cases such as the translation of the Ohada text and uh, uh, many other things that he cited to prove that uh, uh, these uh, persons are not being uh, uh, marginalized. Why then do we see talk of marginalization with you? Well, I don't know whether your question is a trap for Mr. Bia or for me, but um, it is evident and clear that uh, his own speech epitomized the marginalization of Anglophones. It was in French to address an English-speaking crowd. It was based on facts that do not reflect the reality. The constitution of Cameroon says the official languages of Cameroon are English and French, and in that order. And if he himself says that he had to translate acts of law yes. into the English language, it means you translate into a foreign language, you don't translate into your own language. Was he translating the other acts from Spanish or Portuguese or Chinese to English? Or was it from French to English? If it was from French to English, then the case of marginalization is justified. It means that there were texts of law that were present in Cameroon for more than 15 years and that were not in the language of Cameroonians. The language of Cameroonians is English and French. Any document that exists only in French is not a document that concerns Cameroonians. Any document that exists only in English is not a document that concerns Cameroonians. So, we have to start respecting our constitution. And I think um, he said it very clearly. He had to translate, and I underline translate, the order documentation, which maybe for your viewers would not know. It's the entire uh, uh, codification of uh, commerce in Cameroon. Uh, uh, and, and, and it is just unimaginable uh, that a president of the republic can have the courage to come and say such a thing to Cameroonians and a couple of seconds later claim that there is no marginalization. He's saying one thing and the contrary. And he said many other things. He said they finally put in place uh, a common law desk at the Supreme Court. Oh, by the way, since 1961, where was this common law desk? They finally put in place common law at Inam. Also, by the way, Inam was only meant for francophones. So you understand, he himself justified the marginalization we've been talking about. And it isn't limited to uh, the sectors of justice and the sectors of education. It is in our daily lives, every single day. The simple fact that he himself talked about uh, new countries, and I fully agree with him on that, that a new country needs to be playing some uh, regional equilibrium, and then considered Anglophones as being one region is an insult to Anglophones. Being an Anglophone is not a tribe. Anglophones are not one region. You cannot tell somebody from Kuseri who is complaining that he has no roads that, well, you build a road in your Kaduma, so why are you complaining? You cannot tell somebody from Bafusam who is complaining because there are no roads in Bafusam that but there are roads in Yaoundé. What's your complaint all about? And that's exactly what Mr. Bia did yesterday and that is what we condemn. And so, frankly speaking, he said one thing and it's contrary. He said he doesn't see the marginalization and the proof that there is no marginalization was exactly the proof that there is marginalization. So my conclusion is that he doesn't understand what marginalization is all about. Okay. To stop this uh, crisis, or rather say a step to solve uh, this uh, crisis that has been ongoing uh, for three years and now, uh, he announced a national dialogue. I would like to know for you, who are those supposed to be involved in that uh, national uh, dialogue? 
Well, he started by uh, one of the first conditions that he put in place is that uh, uh, they will be holding the button and the card. They will be deciding on who is part of it and who is not part of it. That's why I said that I myself, as an individual and the social democratic firm, um, has to be able to understand what the conditions and the modality uh, for that dialogue are before we can agree on going there. If you were to choose or if you were to be asked, so who can participate in the dialogue, what are you going to say? Well, I can no longer choose because he has already made it clear that it will be parliamentarians, elected individuals, in civil society, clerics and so on. He gave the list already, so what do you want me to add on it? Are the uh, other persons maybe you think he left out? You? Journalists? I didn't hear him talk about the media. And the media has been playing a critical role in fueling either hate or fueling violence or fueling information that is not correct, that is part of part and package of the problem we're facing. So right now, tell me, is uh, the national dialogue, can it put an end to this crisis? Well, you're not interviewing Jesus or Mohammed, you're interviewing Joshua Osi. I can only work towards peace. Yes. I cannot predict what will happen. I'm sure you cannot uh, predict what will happen, but uh, uh, for you, if you were to, if you were maybe to be in the minds of uh, uh, these uh, many anglophones, what do you think can be their state of mind at the moment? Well, um, as I told you, uh, we're waiting for the modalities, so why do you want me to start talking about something that doesn't exist yet? He's just announced that there will be dialogue. 24 million Cameroonians have been asking for it for the past years. Finally, he has come to the conclusion that the majority is right over him. Uh, now he's gone towards that direction. Let us wait and see uh, where it will take us to. I'm not running after it. Um, we've been asking for it, and we it will, based on the modalities uh, that will be put in place, we'll see whether we get there or not. So, Mr. Joshua Osi, you as a person and uh, secondly as a vice, the first vice president of the Social Democratic Front, are you satisfied in general? I am not at all satisfied as we are talking to each other today. People are dying, people's houses are being burned. Uh, we uh, have problems everywhere. Uh, the ghost towns or the lockdown or whatever those people call it have never been as intensive as this morning. Uh, so no, I'm not satisfied. I'll only be satisfied when we'll be able to hold this interview in a year ago. It is the end. Uh, thanks for answering our questions. You're welcome and I wish you a nice day. Thank you uh, to ladies and uh, gentlemen. We have come to the end of the second part of this program entitled uh, The Guest. Thanks for watching. That was uh, Joshua Ossi's uh, reaction, uh, the first uh, vice uh, uh, president of the Social Democratic uh, uh, Front uh, on uh, President uh, Paul Bia's uh, message uh, to uh, the uh, nation uh, on to other things. Uh, but we remain uh, in uh, this uh, second part of our program. Uh, we are going to have the rubric entitled No Comments. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're just uh, joining us, uh, uh, that was the last but not the least uh, rubric of our program entitled uh, uh, Week uh, Review. We have finally come to the end of this uh, uh, program. Uh, see you next uh, uh, Saturday when it's going to be exactly 10.30 uh, uh, a.m. AM. But uh, before we go, we thank uh, each and everyone that uh, participated in this uh, program. Bye-bye.